What is going on guys, Vlad here with AsolusPLC.com. If you enjoy videos on PLC programming, HMI development, or any other application development for industrial automation, consider hitting this subscribe button down below on your screen. And of course, the notification bell to receive the latest videos that I will be putting out on this channel. Without any further delay, let's get into today's video. All right, so today we're gonna be looking at user-defined data types or more commonly known as UDTs. So user-defined data types essentially allow you to bundle a different set of data together which typically uh go to a common piece of equipment or just bundle of software. So user-defined data types are extremely important in RS Logics programming because they allow you to abstract certain devices and reapply your code easily which means that essentially once you bundle it once in a certain package you can simply reapply that to different applications without having to remodify your udt so looking at the plc that we've programmed in the past we can find a user defined uh, types right here on the controller organizer on the left side and if we scroll all the way down you're usually going to have these closed out but data types are going to contain se several different folders in which uh, you're going to find a lot of the different data types that alan bradley provides you but the user defined ones are going to be all the way at the top and as you can see i already have a few examples which we're going to look at in the future but i'm going to be showing you how to set one up from scratch and then i'm also going to talk about where to apply these user data types and where they should not be applied so in order to create your first user data type we can right click this and uh, user defined folder and create a new data type you can of course export them and import them into your program as you've seen on the uh, menu right there so when i right clicked i could also import a user data type that i've predefined somewhere else but once this window pops up you have this very simple interface so you do have to give it a name and usually I just put UDT in front of it so that it's very noticeable of what it is. Um, and here, usually you want to give something descriptive, but we're going to be doing a test one, so we can just name it whatever. Description, of course, uh, very important for the next software developer that's going to look at your code. What does your UDT actually stand for? Not extremely important in our case. Members, so these are the data members that are going to reside within our data type. So in order to make this a little bit more simple for us, let's think of a, of a motor, for example. So a three-phase motor, which is running in the field. So this motor is going to have some kind of a system around it. So the system around this motor is going to be a start button, a stop button. The motor status is going to have a certain effect. So there's a feedback loop coming back. So let's do it like so. So there's going to be a start for the motor. This data type, as uh, a normal button would suggest, is going to be a Boolean. So it's either going to be true or false stop this is also going to be a boolean we're going to have like i said a confirmation of the motor actually running so we can name it as such and we will see where these names actually come into place because they essentially become tags within our udt structure so boolean running is going to be our feedback the motor is also going to have a speed reference in speed reference in for example rpm so in RPM, this is going to be, instead of making a real, we'll, we'll make it an integer, assuming that there's no, there's going to be no 2000.01 RPM, for example. And we're also going to have a speed in Hertz. So for example, there's going to be RPM, there's going to be Hertz, and Hertz is going to be a real value. Uh, we can also include what's called arrays. So I've alluded to this in a couple of videos and people had questions about this, but arrays are essentially just a number of those same data types that I've specified right there. So here, for example, if we want to have a certain timer for our motor, um, and let's say we don't know what it's going to be uh, in the future. So I would give it a generic name, like for example, like I said, timer, or you can just give it a Boolean and um, here would specify a timer and an array of 10 different timers. So for example, if you want to create a system that starts up a motor over 10 seconds, if you want to wrap down, ramp down after 10 seconds, you would use these generic timers that are already in the UDT. We can also create some data members so for example, uh, depending on which motors you're dealing with, you might need certain tags that, for example, measure, um, you know, certain centers, sensors on your motor. So you might have different booleans of data. So this is going to be boolean 
32 so 32 bits of data for the motor what else would we have so th this is pretty much a simple structure for the motor once you're done with uh, editing your udt you can hit apply and do notice that i'm obviously working with this on an offline file because once UDTs are sent to a controller you cannot simply modify them live so it's usually what you can do is you can export and import and override a certain UDT but it's not as easy to uh, to change them once they are on a live controller so once we commit to that particular UDT as you can see it is going to be listed right here so UDT example PLC class and now it becomes usable all over the program so here we're going to create a new program in our tutorials actually let's just uh, yeah let's create a new new program here so we're going to hit add a new program and we're going to call it udt practice we're going to hit okay and so udt practice comes out right here we're going to add a main so i always like to add a underscore zero one underscore main as the main routine let's see here this is going to be a lot of logic programmer but uh, but of course you can use this in any other um in any other format so let's hit okay we've got our main so in our main and now we can start using the tags that we've created for the ut but how exactly do we do this so we're going to have a start and a stop very simple structure as we've seen many many times now so here we're going to have this for example motor one dot start so once i type that in and i don't need to fully type that in all i need to do is create a new motor and this motor instead of being a certain data type that has been defined by alan bradley is going to be a udt plc uh, example plc class i should have named this motor but anyways that's uh, not a problem here and as you can see that's going to be the tag so here now i'm, go I'm going to use motor dot stop and it should auto hopefully auto complete motor one dot stop okay so it auto completes motor one dot running um so you have these essentially the tags that we've defined can now be used with conjunction with a specific motor and you can very easily you know instead of typing in these tags as individual um, as individual tags as I've seen in some of the other videos that I've made you can essentially create a single structure which encompasses that entire um, that entire structure and for example here you know we can say motor that once the motor is actually running then we need a certain timer so let's do that let's make that an XIC there's going to be a timer that starts so I'm just going to change that to a timer and this is going to be motor one that timer zero so we're going to use the first timer in our array i'll show you that in just a second and this is going to be set to five seconds so the motor essentially is going to start after um after five seconds that it has been initialized and we're going to put that right here and of course you get access to every single tag that would otherwise be accessible through that um, data type so motor time that zero that done once the timer is done you energize some kind of an output so this could be you know an output for the latch but this is going to reside within your plc structure so motor start uh, so this of course is not going to be uh it's important to carpet um uh, essentially co compartmentalize different uh, objects within your structure but you also have output so this is going to be for example output one and you define your output one as something that starts the motor instead of it being uh, that particular structure. So let's just create that object so we don't have an error right there. So this is going to be a, a program scope tag like so. So as you can see, this is a very simple example, but it illustrates very well what's going on here. So we didn't have to create individual Booleans for each one of those start, stop buttons, running, not running, timers, all kinds of different stuff. And if we go back into our local tags you will notice that the motor type or the motor one type that we've created is a self-contained block and once we expand that block as you can see we have all the tags that we've talked about so we have the booleans the real the integers and of course the arrays so the arrays being 
specified, like I said, this was a question in a previous video, arrays are specified always by their size. So this means that there's 32 booleans within this a data array, and there's going to be 10 timers within this time array. If you hit this little plus here, you can expand the array and look at each and every boolean. And of course, you can call them by this data. So for example, here, if we were to tie in, instead of going to this output one, we could have said that motor one that data zero is actually the tag that we want to activate and we can actually mistype that data data zero um, and that would be the tag that's used in that particular instance so that's pretty much how you use UDTs a very a very important topic it is very important to keep in mind as well not to get overwhelmed with UDTs because you can include a whole lot of data into one single UDTs but you want to make sure that it makes sense for your particular application we're also going to look at an example of an existing or a couple existing UDTs that I've built here in the program and let's look, for example, at the output. So you want your UDTs to still be small enough in order to be able to encompass certain uh, structures. And here we have an output structure. So an output, think of uh, something simple that just comes on and off. But there are quite a few things that you can do with in an output. So here, for example, an output can be energized, can be in auto, can be in manual. So if you want full control of your outputs, you can create a very simple yet uh, powerful system that allows you to create the entire infrastructure for all of your outputs in order for you to just copy paste that for all of them and uh, down the road essentially you can troubleshoot really easily what this allowed me to do is to put a uh, faceplate on an hmi screen and allow the person to go into a manual function so something that uh, for example somebody in maintenance would use and toggle the outputs or force the outputs from the screen on or off and do it uh, very securely i also have this name which is going to be a string so very, very important. You can also combine that structure and give a name to your output so that it, once again, your faceplate on the HMI side can retrieve that specific unit and display the name of that particular, uh, particular output. So very, very useful to condense your structures into such compartments. Here's a PID which is uh, essentially a loop used to control certain devices. And it's not a very complicated uh, complicated UDT, but all you have is a proportional integral and the derivative statuses or set points, as well as your control variable set point and your uh, other variable, which is going to be the feedback variable, essentially. Then you have an auto and a name. So very, very uh, useful to create these kinds of uh, structures in order to encompass your data in what's called a user defined data type. So hopefully guys you understand that concept. If you have any questions make sure to leave that in the comment section and I'll see you next time. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic make sure to leave them in the comment section below and if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video if you've enjoyed it that would mean absolutely the world to me and if you have any suggestions for the channel what kind of hardware software I should be covering then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time take care bye.